On this episode of the Catholic Echo Podcast from the Diocese of Youngstown, we're talking about the new year for the diocese and the Catholic Echo with Bishop David Bonner and Katie Wagner. Find more about this episode's topic, including articles from the Catholic Echo at catholicecho.org slash podcast. And now the host of the Catholic Echo Podcast, Father Jim Porta. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Echo Podcast. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Our show is brought to you by the annual Diocesan Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and Cumulus Media Youngstown. With me again is Bishop David Bonner, the Bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast over these few months. And as we get into the new year, for us, we're going to talk about some of the things that have happened this past year here in the diocese and in the local church, but also looking forward to some of the things that we could be open to and look forward to as a diocesan church. First of all, Bishop, I want to welcome you to the show. And also, we've had an opportunity in the past to talk about some significant things. We've talked about your pastoral letter, which was your second pastoral letter. We've talked about Hispanic ministry, a significant gathering that you've had with the people of the uh, Hispanic community. We know that you've celebrated masses with the healthcare people, with those in law. So those are events that continue to go on in the life of the church. What are some things, as you look back on your ministry here as bishop, that you've enjoyed this past year? It's been a wonderful year, busy year, lots of lots of miles traveled in the car and, and on the plane. As you know, our diocese celebrated 80 years this past year, and it was my honor, uh, with the help of Father Jack Lavelle, to lead a pilgrimage to Scotland and Ireland, and the significance of that being that we wanted to go to the island of Iona and celebrate Mass, where St. Columba, our patron, sought refuge in a monastery. That was a very wonderful experience, not only in terms of the sense of being with people from throughout the diocese, there were about 43 of us, mm -hmm. but my two sisters and my one brother-in-law accompanied us on this mm -hmm. trip, and so it was a family moment, too, that I was able to share with them and to share them with the faithful of this diocese. Sure. I think another thing that is really near and dear to many people's hearts, and that is uh, parish life. We know that parish life, not only here in our diocese, but parish life around the country and even perhaps around the world is evolving. It's changing. We are not having the same way of celebrating parish community. That, for many people, is difficult, and yet many of us understand the necessity of parish evolution and change. What has been some of the changes that have happened? We know there's been mergers that have happened. Talk about why mergers have been important for our diocesan church. It's so important that as we move forward in this new way of being, mm -hmm. that we leave no one behind. Right. And we're always stronger when we're together. It's not always easy, though, because we live in a culture that's very individualistic. Mm -hmm. And I have to confess that I have my concerns about our culture in light of the fact that community, which was really so foundational to our makeup mm -hmm. as a country and even as a church, mm -hmm. is something that more and more, it seems, is becoming an endangered species because of the, the power of me, myself, and I, the individual. Mm -hmm. That's a real challenge mm -hmm. as we move forward to really instill a deep and lively sense of community and to sustain that in our families, but also in our parishes, even though it's a new way of being. I know one thing that happened within our local parishes, and especially in Columbiana County, was the train derailment in East Palestine. You were very present to the people there. What was your experience and what did you learn about parish life and commitment and community when you gathered with them? I've had the privilege of being out there on a handful of occasions, and what, what strikes me is their resiliency. Mm -hmm. They're unflappable. And they came to Mass, and they sung, and they prayed, and they gathered together. They turned to God. They're living their faith, and, you know, I, I tried as best as I could to put myself in their shoes. We all saw the smoke, the fire, 
the devastation. Miraculously, no one was killed. I can't help but think that Our Lady of Lourdes had something to do with that, mm-hmm. the patron of the parish there. I think it's resiliency. And I think that as, you know, there's that old commercial, life comes at you fast. And life mm-hmm. came at them fast. And the only way to respond is to stand up to it and to turn to God. I know that we've been blessed this past summer with three new priests. You ordain three priests. And hopefully, as we go into the new year, you'll ordain a few more priests. And so that whole sense of welcoming young men into the priesthood in the diocesan church is really a celebration for all of us, not just for you as the bishop and for us as priests, but also for the people. What can people do for our church and for you as bishop and and us as priests to help foster vocations? The first thing is to pray. We need to intentionally pray for an increase of vocations. Mm -hmm. We have this prayer to wrote a wise servant of God as we continue to go through that process. And there's an intention in there that person can add for what special intention they want. And every day I pray that prayer and I pray for an increase of vocations for this diocese. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing is to support their parish priests. They're stretched, they're tired, but they're in need of being loved and supported. And none of us are perfect. We have feet of clay, we're earthen vessels, Mm -hmm. but they need to know that they're loved. And I think the third thing is invite. I think there's a lot of good young Mm -hmm. men, even middle-aged men, who God is still calling to priesthood. And if not to priesthood, then to a life of lay ecclesial ministry in the church, Mm -hmm. which is just as important for our diocese as having priests, because Father can't do it all himself. I mean, it's apples and oranges, of course. Mm -hmm. Only Father can celebrate the sacraments, but you need a team. It it takes a village. I think that they could invite people to consider a deeper life working with and for the church. This past year, we celebrated the 80th anniversary of the Diocese of Youngstown. As we go into this new year of grace, we look forward to the 100th anniversary, which is just 20 years away. For many of us young people, that's not that long in the future. For many of us older people, we don't know if we're going to be present for that. But for the folks that are listening, what would you like to let them know that they can look forward to or we should look forward to as a diocesan church as we mark eventually 100 years? Given the fact that we are not in this alone, that we are united with the church in the United States and the universal church, mm-hmm. and we're you know on the heels of the synod and the Eucharistic revival, and we're looking forward to the holy year coming up, I think just openness to grace. It's God's church, and God will continue to lead us, and we just want to make sure that we are receptive and open as the Blessed Mother was open to being a dwelling place to Jesus. And for the folks that are with us, we certainly want to let you know of our prayers and our blessings as we enter this new year of grace, that the Lord will continue to walk with you, to be with you, to accompany you, and please know the prayers of this local church as you continue your journey on the pilgrimage to God's kingdom. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know that the Catholic Echo magazine is delivered 10 times per year to 52,000 Catholic households in Northeastern Ohio? That's more than 150,000 people. And the Catholic Echo website, catholicecho.org, has been averaging 30,000 views per month since it launched in February 2023. Advertise your business, special event, or service with the Catholic Echo in print or online. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Advertising discounts are available for Catholic institutions as well as for businesses that commit to five or ten issues in a year. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org or visit the Advertising tab at catholicecho.org for more information. Hello, I'm Bishop Dave Bonner of the Diocese of Youngstown. Christmas is a blessed time to remember the miraculous gift of God's love in Jesus, the newborn King. We recall the angel's message announced over 2,000 years ago. Today, in the city of David is born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. As we celebrate his birth, 
May his gifts of love and peace be born again in our hearts and homes this Christmas season. With me now is Katie Wagner, who is the editor-in-chief of the Catholic Echo Magazine. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me, Father Gorda. You know, the last time we talked, Katie, we were talking primarily about the new Catholic Echo, the ending of the Catholic Exponent. And so this is really an opportunity for us to kind of take a look back as to where we have been. And then in our next segment, we're going to talk about where we're kind of going. And what I'd like us to first talk about is the ending of the Catholic Exponent, which was part of our diocese for almost 80 years. And that was a newspaper that eventually became every other week. But now we're into the Catholic Echo, and we're going to talk about that. But let's talk about the Catholic Exponent and what you've experienced about that when you first started. So when I first started working for the diocese, it was summer 2022. You know, the exponent still had almost a full year in in production. Mm -hmm. And I really got to know the team, Mm -hmm. which was really nice. And thankfully, all of them stayed on Mm -hmm. and and went with us to the Echo. And I think that's been the greatest blessing because, you know, certainly I could look back at the exponent and I could say, oh, well, the recipe section's cool. Maybe we should have that in the Echo or, Mm -hmm. you know, oh, well, you know, the exponent used to cover this. Maybe we should do that. But the fact that the people who were putting the exponent together are still here with us, I think has been the most helpful thing as we're trying to transition and, you know, get everyone used to a new product. They've been absolutely wonderful to work with, all of them. And let's talk about transitioning from that print media of the newspaper to another print media, the magazine. How has that been received and how significant has that change been? Sure. Yeah, it has been very well received. It is a different animal. The thing that I think is the biggest adjustment for everyone involved, you know, including my staff, is the fact that deadlines are really different Mm -hmm. for magazines. Mm -hmm. So generally, a magazine goes to print about a month before it's hitting your home, which means we're writing about two months before it's hitting your home. So there are some things that, you know, if we want them to be more timely, the only place for them is online. Mm. Because if not, then by the time you're reading it, it's super old news. So that's why the website has been a very important component of this transition. Let's talk primarily about the website now and how people can access that. Sure. And what is kind of the makeup of that? Definitely. So it's catholicecho.org. If you go on there, it is organized into several different categories. So you'll be able to find podcasts on there like this one. Mm -hmm. We also have wine skins on there. All of our videos are also on there. And then we have the news sort of separated into different categories. Mm -hmm. So there are all the stories that appear in the magazine and they're all in one category. Mm -hmm. And when you go to that section, you can look at a digital flip book so you can see exactly what the print issue looked like Mm -hmm. and what the stories look like in Mm -hmm. print. But then we have a separate news section and those are the things that are online exclusive. So they are only appearing on the website and that's all under the news. We have it, you know, everything is tagged so you can sort by category, you can sort by county, Mm -hmm. you can even sort by parish in some instances if we've written about them multiple times. So it's pretty neat. I mean, it's a cool place to be able to go and to look for news in your area. We know that you've had several issues, almost six or seven issues since we've started the Catholic Echo. And as you look back on some of those early issues, what stands out and what was so exciting for you in those first couple of issues? Well, I mean, those first issues, I'll never forget the very first one came out. I couldn't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. I drove to the printer the morning it printed and I said, can you please give me one? And, you know, I was on my way into the office. Mm -hmm. So I had this box of the magazines And I said, you know what? I just like need a moment with this magazine by myself. So I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts Uh and had a coffee and sat there and read my magazine. (laughs) (laughs) So, but it's just been so exciting. I mean, just the opportunity to, even from a design standpoint, make something you know sort of. And it isn't from the ground up because we had the exponent, you know. But it is a totally different product and just 
being able to really see that from the time it was a little prototype, you know, all the way through what arrived in people's homes. That was just a very exciting thing, I think, for all of us here. You you know, it's interesting. We've transitioned from a newspaper to a magazine, but we're still talking about print, Mm -hmm. you know. And so for many people, that medium is still important. You know, obviously, we don't have as many newspapers in the United States that we used to. We don't have as many magazines as we used to. And yet we have some, and, and I like to call some of them the remnants. And the remnant, even in biblical terms, was important. And so we have this celebration of the print media in this new form, but it's also transitioned into digital. So people who have the wherewithal to go online, to use their smartphone or their tablet, they can access that. And many people like to do that, but yet there are people that still need something to hold in their hands. Why is that nowadays? Obviously, there are people who grew up with print media being, you know, Mm -hmm. one of the primary forms of news. But I mean, I think even people in the younger generations can appreciate something that is a little bit more permanent and Mm -hmm. that they can touch and feel and hold and interact with and, you know, set aside and pick it up later. And Mm -hmm. I think that if something is printed and it's sitting in front of you, you can continue gleaning information from it as many times. I mean, I, you know, I've read some books five, six times. I feel like I always learn something new, but I think Mm -hmm. it's the same with the magazine. And I think the nice thing about the Catholic Echo is that every registered parishioner in the Diocese of Youngstown gets it. How significant is that? It is very significant. And that was a large database project that we went through to get that list. You know, and we're we're still working through some of the kinks, certainly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the fact that we're reaching about three times the number of folks who were receiving the exponent. I mean, that that's very exciting. And it's a really a tool of evangelization when you look at it. And nowadays, you know, we like to talk about how we need to accompany one another in this journey of faith. And so why not use the tools of the mass media, including the print medium and, and also the digital, to foster faith and to enable that and to encourage that. So I know that as I have read the Catholic Echo these last many issues and look forward to uh, new ones, that it's not always old news, but it's it's celebratory news. It's lives of people that we know and love here in the Diocese of Youngstown, which is significant because many dioceses, while they have gone to a magazine format, have done that in cooperation with other dioceses. But this is significant because it's just for the Diocese of Youngstown. Absolutely. I actually got a really nice email from a woman earlier this week who was saying that she's new to the diocese. She's a little older and she moved from Pennsylvania and they used to be very active in their parish but because they've gotten a little bit older it's Mm -hmm. been hard for them to hit you know get to some of the events and that kind of thing but just how much the echo has helped them feel connected in their new home and their new community and I'm like you know what that's that's what we're trying to do here so I'm really glad to hear that that's good news good news we're going to talk a little bit more about the Catholic echo and its future in just a moment but we need to take a quick break stay with us we'll be back in a moment The Catholic Echo magazine is delivered free of charge to anyone who is registered at a parish in the Diocese of Youngstown, but subscriptions are also available for non-parishioners. A subscription costs $40 per year, and you can buy one for yourself or gift a subscription to a loved one. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org for more information. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Katie Wagner, Editor-in-Chief of the Catholic Echo. What I'd like us to talk about now is that we're kind of like in the middle of an issue. How many issues are there actually for the Catholic Echo, and what can people look forward to? Certainly. So it is published 10 times per year. Our combined issues are December and January, and then June and July. And the reasons for those are because we have two significant things happening during that time of year. So, you know, we wanted to be able to have 
directories for Lenten activities mm. in February. Mm. So we thought, okay, let's give parishes a break from submitting right. their events, you mm-hmm. know, for a January issue. And then for the summer, we have all the festivals going on. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of just so that we have time Mm -hmm. to kind of gather our information, get the information out there that we need the information. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's, you know, why we decided on on that schedule. But it is monthly other than, than those two that are combined. When we're talking about the involvement of people, you had mentioned in the first segment that many of the people that worked with the Catholic Exponent work with you now in the Catholic Echo. Mm -hmm. One of the other components are people in parishes. And how significant are parishes for you to get information, to get the news, to talk about what's happening and what's coming up? Oh, it's very significant. You know, we're talking about six counties, Mm -hmm. over 80 parishes. And, you know, there's only so much that we even can know about what's going on Mm -hmm. when we're talking about that many organizations Mm -hmm. that we're responsible for talking about. So anytime that parishes have an event going on, I just encourage them, please let me know. Let me know as soon as you know what you're doing. And if you have photos from past years, send them to me. And Or if there's something exciting happening at your parish, or if there's someone who's doing something that's, you know, really valuable and has made a huge impact like we want to know all of these stories because it's hard for us to find all of them on our own we really rely on people to pitch stories to us and speaking of stories you have a number of people who write the stories for you without mentioning names talk about some of the people and some of what they're involved with and how you get those stories our stories are developed in different stages Mm. so often if we'll say okay we're planning for march here are all the things on the liturgical calendar that are happening in March. And here are things that we know of that are happening around the diocese that could be happening in March. And here are some stories that might be interesting. Mm -hmm. And then generally, I will reach out to some of the writers and I'll say, okay, here's some of the things we're kicking around. What are you interested in? And that has been nice because, you know, I think when you, instead of saying to a writer, you're going to write about this, you know, saying like, which of these really is appealing to you? Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I I think you get a little bit more passion out of the writing. We also have writers that'll pitch stories that'll say, hey, at my parish, this thing's going on. I think this would be a really cool thing for you to write about. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we're happy to cover it. So yeah, I mean, we have writers that work for different newspapers around the diocese. Mm -hmm. We have writers who are just very, very passionate about their faith that might Mm -hmm. come from more of a theological background. Mm -hmm. We have writers that come from more of a newsy, journalistic standpoint, and then we have writers that come from more of a storytelling background. And we have places for all of the styles Mm -hmm. with the way that the Echo is set up now. So it's been wonderful. We've really put together a wonderful team. Well, I think, to your credit, it really is a, a wonderful magazine, and there's something in it for everybody, which is nice. And what I like also is that it talks about the lives of people, and that's basically what church is. It's people, and it's us doing things together. When we talk about the importance of the magazine, we also have to talk about the financial part of it all, because it is a financial cost. So can we be realistic and talk about what goes into the making of this magazine? There are several ways that the magazine is funded. One of the first ways is advertising. Mm -hmm. Whenever you look through your issue of the Echo, take a good look at those businesses in there because they are the ones that are helping bring the Echo into your hands and make sure you patronize their businesses. You know, we very much appreciate our advertisers. So that's one of the first ways. The second way is a payment from the parishes. Mm -hmm. The parishes are sort of subsidizing some of the cost, not all of the cost of the Echo hitting homes. And actually, in some cases, parishes are paying less for the Echo than they were for the Exponent. Mm -hmm. But that is another way we are supporting this financially. Certainly, we are always looking for new advertisers. And if you know of anyone who maybe isn't registered at a parish Mm -hmm. and might want to receive the Echo, we do have subscriptions as well. So, you know, people can reach out to us. They can sign up. It's $40 a year for a household subscription if you're not already a a registered parishioner. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty of those as well. 
I'd like to go back to the parishes because I think the parishes are really kind of like crucial when we're talking about any kind of effort within the Diocese of Youngstown because that's who supports it, who fosters it, who promotes it. What would you like to tell the parishes and and the leadership in the parishes and in particular the priests about the Catholic Echo and what they could do to further the cause and to encourage folks to read the Echo? I feel like I keep bringing up story ideas, <laughs> but you know, pastors and priests are so involved in every aspect of what is going on at their parishes. It really, we want the communication to be open. I know that I am always sending out emails and saying, mm-hmm. you know, hey, I need this from you, I need that from you, but reach out to me and say, I need this from you. Sure. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. say we have this event going on. It would be great if you did this, or help connect us with the people at your parish that mm-hmm. are planning events. That is a good way to help. But also, I know we have some pastors who, you know, like to say, hey, the the Echo was delivered at homes this weekend. We've been making sure that we have extras delivered to parishes. They're in the backs of the churches. Those are for people to take. Certainly encouraging people to, you know, interact with us in print as well as online is, is always helpful to us. What would you like to see in future editions of the Catholic Echo that might not be in present ones, but as you kind of project, what are some of those things, but also maybe some of those stories? I think our first issue was May 2023. I would like to, once we've gotten our April issue out, really as a team sit down and talk about, okay, what were the stories that really worked? Mm -hmm. What were some that maybe didn't hit the mark? And really just sort of take a look back at the things that worked and the things that didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, we're constantly trying to improve different things. The first few issues, we got comments about font sizes and readability. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we started minimizing instances of reverse type and we increased the font size so, Mm -hmm. so that it was bigger than what was in the exponent. And Things like that, but, you know, certainly any feedback that folks have is valuable as we're, we're having these conversations. One thing that I should mention before we run out of time is that our email newsletter will be launching. So if anyone would like to sign up for that, that will help direct folks to the stories that are online exclusive, which I know we have the section in the print edition, but because the print edition sure. goes to the printer so much earlier than Mm -hmm. when people are reading it. Sometimes that's not completely up to date Mm -hmm. yet. Like we might say, okay, this thing's online, but it's it's not quite online yet just because of how things shake out. But the online newsletter will direct people to what they need to know about what's on the website. So if anyone's interested in that, I highly recommend you sign up at thecatholicecho.org. Well, we appreciate your presence, first of all, on our show today, Katie, and we thank you for the wonderful job that you and your staff and team are doing to promote evangelization, to promote the Diocese of Youngstown through the Catholic Echo, also the digital part of that, which is so important in the lives of young people. But we encourage the folks that are listening to go to catholicecho.org to get more information, to listen to this podcast, but also to learn more about the faith, the church, and the Diocese of Youngstown. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Father Corda. Thank you for having me. The Catholic Echo Podcast is a production of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown in cooperation with Cumulus Media Youngstown. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Have a blessed day and may God be with you.